following is the primary purpose of access control. A. To prevent unauthorized access to resources. B. To increase network speed. C. To reduce power consumption. D. To improve software usability. 2. What type of attack involves intercepting and altering communication between two parties without their knowledge? A. Phishing. B. Man in the middle. C. Denial of service. D. Brute force. 3. Which of the following is considered a technical control and in information security? A. Security policy. B. Firewall. C. Security awareness training. D. Background checks. 4. What does the principle of least privilege enforce? A. Users should have access to only the resources necessary for their job functions. B. Users should have full access to all systems. C. Users should change passwords monthly. D. Users should share credentials. 5. What is the primary function of a firewall? A. To monitor and filter incoming and outgoing network traffic. B. To encrypt data. C. To detect malware. D. To backup data. 6. Which encryption algorithm is symmetric? A. RSA. B. AES. C. ECC. D. Diffie-Hellman. 7. What is the purpose of a digital signature? A. To encrypt data. B. To verify the authenticity and integrity of a message. C. To increase file size. D. To provide network access. 8. Which of the following is a common method of user authentication? A. Username only. B. Password only. C. Multi-factor authentication. D. IP address filtering. 9. What is a risk assessment primarily used for? A. Identifying and evaluating threats and vulnerabilities. B. Writing security policies. C. Developing software. D. Training employees. 10. What type of malware is designed to replicate itself and spread to other systems? A. Virus. B. Trojan horse. C. Spyware. D. Ransomware. 11. What is the main purpose of intrusion detection systems? A. To prevent all attacks. B. To monitor network or system activities for malicious actions. C. To encrypt communications. D. To manage user accounts. 12. Which access control model is based on roles assigned to users? A. Discretionary access control. B. Mandatory access control. C. Role-based access control. D. Rule-based access control. 13. What does the CIA triad stand for in information security? A. Confidentiality, integrity, availability. B. Control, inspection, authentication. C. Compliance, integrity, access. D. Confidentiality, identification, authorization. 14. What is social engineering in the context of cybersecurity? A. Developing software tools. B. Manipulating people to divulge confidential information. C. Writing security policies. D. Encrypting data. 15. What is the purpose of hashing in data security? A. 
to encrypt data for confidentiality. B. To verify data integrity. C. To compress files. D. To backup data. 16. Which of the following is a physical security control? A. Firewall. B. Security guards. C. Antivirus software. D. Password policies. 17. What is the main goal of patch management? A. To develop new software. B. To identify, acquire, and install software updates to fix vulnerabilities. C. To monitor network traffic. D. To backup data. 18. What is the difference between vulnerability and threat? A. Vulnerability is a weakness, threat is a potential danger. B. Vulnerability is an attack, threat is a defense. C. Vulnerability is a type of malware, threat is software. D. Vulnerability is a firewall, threat is a virus. 19. What is a man trap in physical security? A. A trap door. B. A small room or vestibule that controls access between two secured areas. C. An alarm system. D. A type of surveillance camera. 20. Which of the following is an example of multi factor authentication? A. Password and username. B. Password and fingerprint. C. Password and password hint. D. Username and email. 21. What is the purpose of a business continuity plan? A. To ensure critical business functions continue during and after a disaster. B. To enforce security policies. C. To monitor employee activity. D. To develop new products. 22. What is a zero-day vulnerability? A. A vulnerability that is publicly known for years. B. A vulnerability unknown to the vendor and for which no patch exists. C. A vulnerability that affects zero users. D. A vulnerability only in old software. 23. What does the term defense in depth refer to? A. Using multiple layers of security controls to protect information systems. B. Using a single firewall. C. Encrypting all data. D. Isolating networks completely. 24. What is the role of an incident response team? A to develop software. B. To handle and manage security breaches and incidents. C. To enforce legal contracts. D. To monitor social media. 25. What is the best way to protect against phishing attacks? A. Use strong passwords only. B. Educate users about recognizing phishing attempts. C. Disable email. D. Install more RAM. System Security Certified Practitioner. The System Security Certified Practitioner SSCP certification is a globally recognized credential offered by ISC Superscript 2 for IT professionals who implement, monitor, and administer IT infrastructure using security best practices. Aimed at network and systems administrators, security analysts, and other operational IT roles, the SSCP validates practical, hands-on knowledge of security policies and procedures. The certification covers seven domains, including access controls, risk identification and monitoring, incident response, cryptography, and network and communication security. To qualify, candidates must have at least one year of cumulative work experience in one or more of the domains or earn the certification as an associate of ISC Superscript 2 while gaining experience.
Earning the SSCP demonstrates a strong foundation in cybersecurity and enhances career opportunities in information security roles. Here are the top five beneficial uses of SSCP exam. 1. Career Advancement SSCP certification validates hands-on technical skills and knowledge in cybersecurity, opening doors to mid-level roles such as security analyst or systems administrator. It can significantly boost earning potential and help candidates stand out in a competitive job market. 2. Industry Recognition Globally recognized by employers and industry leaders, SSCP demonstrates a solid foundation in information security practices and operations. It's a respected credential in various sectors including healthcare, finance, and government. 3. Skills Validation The SSCP exam ensures candidates possess essential competencies in areas like access controls, risk identification, cryptography, and incident response, confirming their readiness for real-world security challenges. 4. Regulatory Compliance Holding SSCP helps organizations meet compliance requirements such as ISO IEC 27001, HIPAA, and NIST standards by verifying staff credentials and security best practices. 5. Pathway to CISSP SSCP serves as an excellent stepping stone toward the CISSP, offering foundational knowledge and experience that align with the more advanced certifications prerequisites.